I didn't open my refrigerator prior to starting the camera and so I'm a little bit nervous how bad it might be. <laughs> If you follow me over on Instagram, you might know that we finally got our hands on a freeze dryer. So I have been hearing about this a lot lately, about how awesome they are. You can save food for up to 25 years. You basically just put food on the trays, put it in, and it dries it completely out so that it will be perfectly shelf stable for very extended periods of time. This morning we pulled a couple trays of watermelon and strawberries out. My kids really love them, so they probably aren't gonna make it 25 years. In fact, I don't even know that there's any left after just a few hours. But once the novelty wears off, I'm really looking forward to actually preserving things. Now I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video our setup because we made a little table for it just outside of the kitchen so that way we could actually use it all the time as opposed to putting it in the basement or in the garage, which we were thinking about doing, but I wanna be able to constantly put things in there to freeze dry. So the first thing I wanna tackle is our refrigerator. Now actually, I didn't open my refrigerator prior to starting the camera, and so I'm a little bit nervous how bad it might be. <laughs> but basically, the issue with the fridge is the amount of eggs. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, 14, 15. There's some back here. There's some here. Probably over 20 dozen eggs are taking up space in the fridge. We froze some several months ago. People have asked me how that went. Well, they're still frozen because we haven't needed them. So I don't know yet how that went. I have a huge bowl here, which I enjoy having a nice pretty bowl, but that's not all. I've got another basket here. So I'm gonna put my Harvest Right freeze dryer to work on its first preserving task with eggs. The first thing I just did was press start. This cools the vacuum chamber. Also, the speed of this whole operation really increases if you freeze the trays first. I have a couple sets of trays. I did not get them in the freezer. I should have. While this is cooling, I'm going to get eggs in the blender and then essentially just pour them into the trays and put them in my freeze dryer and press start. We did not do a good job of labeling and um, like rotating. We're constantly eating eggs, but then we're also constantly putting them in. With our uh, fresh milk from our cow, we do put dates on it because, you know, milk goes sour a lot faster than eggs. But given that we didn't really label these correctly, I'm skeptical that some of them have been here too long. If they're not washed, they keep a really long time. But what I'm gonna do is crack them into a bowl separate, unfortunately, because that's gonna take forever but I don't want to ruin a whole batch by pouring in one rotten egg. All right, I started getting them all out of the fridge and then remembered that I can only fit in like four dozen eggs at a time in the freeze dryer, so I'm not gonna actually be able to get all of these taken care of. I'm also gonna do the float test. I kind of forgot to mention that. If you put eggs in water, if they sink to the bottom, they aren't bad. If they kind of stand on end, so that way they're not you know, fully submerged, but they're not floating, they're good. If they float, they are very likely bad. I'm gonna work a little smarter this time. Mommy, Black Jack will wick it. Jack Jack will wick it? Yeah, Black Jack will wick it. All right. There, that's the ticket. We got four dozen in the free dryer, and then now we're gonna get four dozen more into trays and in the freezer. 
So I have these plastic lids. So I'm just gonna stack them up here because apparently this could shave off like 10 hours of the freeze drying time because obviously if it's already frozen. The way the freeze dryer works is first it freezes really, really cold. So I think it's gonna have to bring this like normal freezer, normal frozen eggs down even further. And then after that, there's a vacuum that introduces, or a little bit of heat is introduced and then the vacuum pulls out the moisture. That's just the very like simplified version of how I understand it. So by freezing something first, you jumpstart that process. So we're gonna get eight dozen eggs taken care of today, which is very exciting. All right, 24 dozen freeze dried eggs later, the fridge is now able to, I'm at that point where I can clean it out and I'm gonna fill it with new groceries. So there's a few things I need to do. One is, as I'm glancing in here, I have like two things of maple syrup that I need to, well, I was gonna say put those together, but actually they're, they're too full for that. But I know it's the same for like a coconut aminos. I have two bottles. I'm gonna put it together, throw away a few things, wipe down a few things. And then I'm gonna fill it with new groceries because we are like very, very empty here. So I love doing this. I love emptying things out. I do the same thing in the freezer. I have hardly anything in that freezer. And so I'm just gonna clean out and refill. All right, this fridge is feeling so, so good. I highly recommend doing this every once in a while, just like diminishing your stuff down as much as you can. Obviously, we always are gonna have a lot of milk. I've reduced the eggs down to these two dozen and then there's a bowl on my counter, but other than that, they're all freeze dried. I've cleaned everything out. I even have the freezer, which I haven't actually gone in and wiped it down, but I have a couple of trays here of watermelon freezing for the freeze dryer. Other than that, it's empty. I have just like a couple of things of bananas or Ziplocs of bananas, some beef liver, which I could even put in the outside freezer, and then some tomatoes, and then my ice cream bowl. But that's it, so I'm just ready to clean. I'm gonna clean out this bottom tray here because it has some eggs on it from um, freeze drying and then refill it knowing that everything in here is new and fresh. Quick grocery haul here since I'm ready to refill my freezer. Obviously some pantry and freezer and fridge stuff here, but I want to do a little tour of the pantry as well. And if you watch my grocery hauls, whether it be Bright Market or Aldi, um, I, you will know that I buy the same thing over and over and over again, same basics that I can then transform into all the different meals that we have, but basically the same staples constantly. I also have a Walmart order coming today, so I have a few more groceries, just a few things that I prefer to source there that I'll show you in a little while whenever that comes. The first thing I'm gonna talk about so I can get them in the freezer are the frozen organic berries. We buy so many of these um, because we make smoothies every day. So we ferment, 
Theodore's getting into the bags. We ferment our dairy into kefir, which basically we just take kefir grains, put it in the milk, let it sit on the counter. We always have that going. And so every morning we will have a kefir smoothie, which tastes best with frozen fruit. So we always get so many bananas, let them get really, really ripe, put them in Ziplocs and freeze them. We freeze our strawberries and blueberries. And this will be, I won't have to buy any fruit for a while. Usually when I do it, I will buy a bunch, then we'll use it all and I'll buy a bunch more. So got six avocados. That's just good with everything. Tacos is probably what we'll use them with, or pizza. A lot of times if I'm making one of my sourdough discard pizza crusts, I like to serve with avocado because other than that, there's really not a whole lot that's fresh. So it'll be like pizza crust, sauce, cheese, and then we'll top it with avocado and sauerkraut. Okay, so some cheeses. I got some mozzarella cheese. I got some butter, some Parmesan cheese, sour cream. Um, I always keep sour cream on hand. I have not gotten into the habit of making it. Currently our cow has mastitis, so we're actually in the process of treating that and we won't be getting milk for another week. So I also got some yogurt. I try not to buy a whole lot of deli meat, but in the summer I love having deli meat for making bagel sandwiches. So bagel cream cheese sandwiches is like our favorite summer meal on the go for going to like a picnic or the creek, something like that. So another thing to put in the fridge is my celery, which I'll use for soups and bone broths. Sweet potatoes, I've just been putting these in the oven, baking until they're soft, and then using them for uh, Theodore, for his baby food, which he doesn't really eat a ton of baby food. He usually just eats whatever we're eating, but it is nice to have something really soft to feed him when we're having a meal that he can't really eat very well. And these avocados, I'm gonna leave them out. Yeah, they're not very ripe, so I'm gonna leave those out. I have a few pantry items, so oatmeal, maple syrup, avocado oil. I use coconut oil and butter for most things, but I especially get avocado oil for homemade mayo, which I use a lot in the summer, like BLT, sandwiches, things like that. I don't really like the taste of olive oil and homemade mayo. I will use it if I have nothing else, but I do keep it on hand for that. Organic sugar and vanilla that I'm gonna put here in my baking drawer. I'm gonna throw these in the pantry. I got a couple packs of organic spaghetti. Love having ready-made pasta on hand for quick meals. My kids love baking. My girls are very good at the einkorn chocolate chip cookie recipe. They've mastered it. They're just so soft and delicious. And so I always keep some chocolate chips for that. I prefer to get organic, but I didn't think it had enough and we ran out. And so I just grabbed one pack. But normally I'd like to get something like that from Drive Market. That's my favorite place to get. A whole bunch of bananas. I think I might've got some bananas from Walmart too. Not for any reason except they were already in my cart and I just checked out but There's no reason why we can't have more bananas. I like to give it to one of my kids because of the banana job where I just give them a whole bunch of bananas, a couple of Ziplocs and a compost bucket. And they put the peels in the compost, they break the bananas in thirds and put them in the bag and then we have frozen bananas ready for smoothies. I wanted to really quick give you an update on my freeze dryer setup, or just to show it to you. I don't think I ever actually showed it to you. You'll have to excuse the noise because there is something in there now, more eggs. But this is our little setup. So basically we wanted to have the freeze dryer on the main level of our house, not the basement. But we also wanted these French doors here to open up from the kitchen. So this is right off of our kitchen. And I figured if the freeze dryer wasn't here, I wouldn't actually use it. We built a very, very slim little table. And then there's a shelf. So this is where I put accessories. And then I have this tension curtain rod. So I'm gonna make a curtain that goes here to cover all of this up. And I have a small tension rod right here that will have a curtain here to cover this up. And I plan to paint the table. So obviously I'll have to remove the freeze dryer to do this. So I'm getting through my eggs because that seems the most urgent. It's what I need to preserve before anything goes bad. And then I'll take like a day or two break from using it to remove it, paint it, make the curtains. And then this little setup, it's very slim. It just fits perfectly in this little spot. Now it does not open all the way. <laughs> But it, it's a pretty good access into our kitchen, which was my main goal. Um, I just wanted this to be nice and open, and it's the best balance of convenience and function that we could come up with in this space. All right, I got a few more things here. Got some beans. We like to have beans in the pantry. The kids whip up chili, and that is just such an easy meal. Kerrygold butter, love having this. Cream cheese, I ordered the organic. Apparently they didn't have it, so I just got this. I really wanted more than that. 
couple of creams, a bread flour, and an all-purpose, more bananas, and some red potatoes. Now I'm gonna put some of this away and do a little bit of cleanup in the pantry as well. There's more work to be done, but this is definitely feeling a lot better. It's more stocked, it's clean. I removed everything and wiped it all down. I have my 20 dozen, I think I have another four dozen in the uh, freeze dryer right now. Eggs, freeze dried, ready to go for this winter. I know I'm gonna get lots of questions about what I'm gonna do with the freeze dried eggs. So basically you can use them just like regular fresh eggs. You take about two tablespoons of the egg powder and whisk it together with two tablespoons of water and then you can use it in recipes just like you would in eggs. So I plan this uh, fall and winter whenever our chickens really decrease their production, which they will do like they do every year. We get an overabundance all spring, all summer, and then suddenly we're left with no eggs and so this is my way to combat that. I plan to make crepes and pancakes and cookies and sweetbreads and my fluffy brioche, sourdough brioche, French toast, all of that with these eggs. Now we might also do some scrambled eggs with onions and salt and pepper and all that kind of stuff with toast, but basically I plan to use them just like I would regular fresh eggs. When they're freeze dried, they will keep up to, I believe 20 years, which that won't happen because we will have these finished probably before it's even February. Unfortunately, this still won't get us through. I wish I had the freeze dryer sooner. I did a lot of other methods, like I have some water glassed eggs back here. I have some frozen ones. This is definitely the easiest way. It's essentially just putting eggs into the trays, putting them in the freeze dryer, and that's it, and then putting them in jars. So all of the methods are very easy, but what I like most about this one is the lack of storage space. So I have a lot of eggs in my freezer taking up space. I have uh, these jars here of water glassed eggs, which I could move into the basement, but they take up a lot of space per egg, whereas this seems to take up the least amount of space, and I feel the most confident about them lasting the longest. But I'm trying out all the methods, and as the fall and winter progress, Definitely make sure to follow along because I do a ton of cooking videos where I take you through what I'm eating in a week, what we're making for breakfast, what we're making for lunch, and I'll be using all of these. I'll be using my water glass eggs, my frozen eggs, my freeze dried eggs, so you can see how all of this unfolds in what way ends up being the clear winner. Now so far, just based on the method itself, not really the outcome, freeze drying has been the easiest and the least storage. If you're interested in trying freeze drying in your own home, whether it be for preserving vegetables from your garden, it's great for that. Making baby food, we've done freeze dried watermelon and strawberries and yogurt melts for Theo, which has been awesome. I'm getting some more watermelon in as soon as these next batch of eggs is done. I've actually, I don't think this freeze dryer has stopped since we got it. You can do full meals in it. You can preserve just about anything in the freeze dryer. Harvest Right did send me an affiliate link. So if you are interested in checking it out, make sure to go to bit.ly forward slash farmhouse freeze dryer and that will be my referral for you if that's something that you're interested in trying out in your own home. I realize it's not something that is a possibility for everyone, but if that's something that you're interested in incorporating in your own home or homestead, definitely check out that link. I hope that you enjoyed watching me clean out my fridge, clean out my pantry, do a refresh with the food and the freezer, and add new groceries, something that has to be fully done very often. At least every other month I like to diminish things way down and clean and get everything back in order. As always, if you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.